Hi everybody! A while back I made a movie about the basics of making a two-part silicone mold. Although that movie is still fully valid, along the way I've picked up some, uh, some extra tips and tricks that might help you build even better molds for your lures. So just hang in here and I'll show you a few of those. The old mold for my jerkbait, the, the jerk, has uh, now reached the, the limit of, of how many lures it can cast. Uh, I think I've casted uh, somewhere around 40 lures in this uh, mold and now the surface within the lure is starting to get hard and full of small cracks and along the way it'll be harder and harder to get the, the resin casts out of it once they're hardened. So I need to make a new mold. And why not while I'm at it? make a better mold. Um, this old mold have a few weaknesses. The, the, the sides here are too thin so I very easily get some uh, leakage and I also had problems with the, the wire not staying in place. Um, so I want to improve that in the new mold. And I actually started out by doing what I always do. I take my master and push it down to some uh, modeling clay. Uh, just like I always do. At this point we are more or less ready to, to pour in some, some silicone into this but I just want to show you a few details that uh, I think is a great improvement to the mold design. Well the first thing you'll notice is that through every eye of the lure I have pushed down a, a pin and this pin is a metal pin that has the same diameter like the, the pins I use for bending the wire. And by doing this, I can uh, make sure that the eye stays in place while I'm casting. I have had many problems along the way or many lures that I could throw out because the, the wire has shifted while uh, collecting the, the mold or um, maybe the, the wire was a bit short so the, the, the tension of the wire would actually pull the, the eyes into the lure more or less and leave the, the, the cast worthless. So by adding these I can make sure that the, the wire stays in place. So I will leave those for the casting. Another little thing I've done is that down here I have in my, my modeling clay I have marked the position and the, the, the amount of weight I need for this lure. I know that you can always uh, have uh, different uh, weights within the lure but this is more or less my baseline. This is the, the amount of weight that would be the the least weight because this is a floating lure with this weight. Uh, so this is more or less the, the zeroing point and if I want to make a sinking weight I will just add more. But by doing this I always know how much I need it and where to place it. Apart from that there's nothing uh, special. Uh, I've had the, the steering holes for the, for the two parts here and I have the funnel up here. And as always I've made a frame in Lego. So now I'll just um, uh, grease up the frame with, uh, with some uh, Vaseline, push it into the modeling clay and cast the first half. That is more or less business as usual. Well, I know it looks like there's a lot of bubbles in here, but my, my experience say that uh, they will just come to the surface and pop along the way. So uh, at least they will stay within the, the mass of the mold and not on the surface of the lure, uh, which I had been worrying about earlier. So I just uh, vibrate it a bit to help the bubbles come to the top and then I leave it to harden for the 24 hours needed. Like that. The first uh, layer of silicone is now uh, fully hardened here so we can uh, peel off the backside and at this point well there's nothing 
apart from the the normal uh, except that we'll be leaving in those uh, pieces of uh, of wire there the the pins and also I'll build up the the second half and as you can see also the the weight measurement here on the on the mold is uh, actually quite nice okay so I'll just finish up the the rest of the funnel uh, add some more Legos and cast the part two of course after applying some the Vaseline to prevent the two parts from getting uh, stuck together okay I'll just do that mix up the same amount of uh, silicone as yesterday so it should be quite easy we've now made it to my my favorite part of uh, any uh, mold making project which is uh, opening up the new mold and see how it turned out uh, I've just removed the, the Legos and we'll be opening, uh, splitting the mold up here by the, the funnel here and it, uh, well, it splits quite nicely like that looking very fine I think I'll just uh, take out the bait or the master here like that putting in the pin again like that and uh, as you can see we have the the pins in here you can take them out but uh, and they will actually when you cast the lure you'll probably pull them out but you can just uh, either replace them or put them back in again and uh, well everything else seems just uh, very nice no bubbles or any disturbing things the the indications of weight and placement is there uh, actually a nice place to to put the wire and everything so I think um, everything is, is more or less just like I I wanted so, well I actually I can't uh, wait getting started and trying the the first cast of this mold, this mold. so I've already bent a wire and I'll just uh, kind of loosely put it in here to see how it uh, fits it might need to uh, be uh, bend a little bit to to fit exactly like I want to and um, I have a piece that uh, I have my weights ready here uh, which is uh, some lead sheet so I'll just uh, squeeze that onto the wire here making sure it sits according to the indication on the mold okay I'll just grab a plier to make sure that it stays there squeezing it okay so now the the thing is in place and I'll just um, put in the pins and as the the wire has been bent around the the same pins as the the um, the pins in the mold they are a bit tight so uh, I might have to uh, just squeeze them in there right away before putting it into the actual mold here but like that as you can see now we have the the wire in place and well this will really stay fixed there um, throughout the process and I'm 100% sure that the eye is exactly positioned like I want to and um, well now I should be able to close the mold along those pins and uh, well, I'll just put on some wooden sides and some rubber bands, mix up a bit of a resin and um, test the mold for the first time.
and then it's just a 15 minute wait. Which I will do off camera. Well, let's have a look. Looking very nice, I think. As I said, the, the pins will follow the bait out here, so I can just uh, remove those afterwards, like that. And um, maybe I should have had the, the rubber bands a little tighter to avoid this, but it really is, isn't that big a problem. Well. It's looking very nice, I think, uh, and uh, eyes and everything are just where I want them. So, well, the, the mold is done now, and uh, this is what I call the, the version 2 of a two-part mold, with all the extra features I have uh, learned to be an uh, advantage. But there is one thing left, though. Uh, when you made a mold like this one, which you are satisfied with, and uh, I must say uh, this one looks very nice, so I am satisfied, you should always make sure to consider how many lures are you going to make. A mold like this will hold well, maybe, let's say, around 40 lures before the, the surface of it will start to, to, uh, to harden and uh, the, the bait starts to get stuck in there. So. What will you make more than that or less? If you make less, well, you're just fine. But uh, I usually end up making more than that. So um, at some point, I need to make another mold. And uh, if I'm satisfied with this one, why not make a copy of this one? Uh, so I easily can uh, can make a new one without all the the modeling clay and everything. So I'll just show you how you can uh, make a mold for the mold. Those of you who follow my channel know that the idea of casting a mold isn't really new to me. These are my previous templates from, for the other, the jerk mold, uh, but I found that this type of, uh, uh, this way of casting them has some disadvantages. So in my latest uh, project I've used a uh, um, another approach which is just like this one. This is actually for my uh, easy crank which is uh, quite new. As you can see here I have included the, the frame in the cast so it's very easy to just uh, pour in the silicone and let it harden and take out the new mold. Very very easy to use and uh, very very fast. And also with this one you can see already I have also those pins in to uh, fix the eyes on. Okay, and I'll just show you how this is done. I've actually prepared a bit and um, already made the new mold ready here on this piece of board. And the way to do so is that um, first of all I have, uh, have uh, put on some, some tape here to avoid the, the resin from getting st uh, stuck into the, the wood. Also I have, uh, have just marked the, the size of the, the molds here and then I have hammered in some small nails and uh, cut up the, the top of them uh, to be able to, to fixate the, the molds uh, a, a bit here because if I just pour in uh, resin uh, without them uh, fixed to the board it will, they will actually float up and uh, my mold will be uh, ruined that way. So now they're here and they're not very hard fixed but they will be they will stay there for the duration of the cast. Now I need to make a, a new Lego frame here around the, the, the whole thing, leaving just about half a centimeter all the way around. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and do that. I've now made the, the frame in the, in the right size here and uh, to avoid uh, any leakage of the, of the resin I'll just uh, put a a strip of tape all the way around in here um, so uh, I will have no leakage that way at least. So I'll just do that.
Okay, and uh, as you can see, the, the, the tape is a, a bit out over the, the side here, so I hope that when I press it down uh, along the, around the, the molds here and uh, hold it down uh, with some uh, duct tape on the outside, I think it will be, uh, be sealed enough for the, for the, the short duration of the, the hardening of the, the resin. So let's just see if we can get this <coughs> duct taped in place. According to my calculations, I need just about 300 milliliters of uh, resin to cover the whole mold. Um, it might seem to be a lot and uh, even a, a little uh, a money to spend on this, but I really promise you, uh, once you need to make another mold, you'll feel it's all worth it. So I'll just uh, mix up um, the two parts here and, um, and then we can get on with the, the casting here. And I will mix in a little bit of glass bubbles just because it makes uh, the, the resin a little more crisp. Last bombs. Mixing this up. Feel the, the heat of the, the resins here. It is starting to heat up a bit. Okay, that the process is starting, and I think, uh, well, the mixing is probably fine now. Just a little bit more. And then we'll just uh, pour it in, like always. Well, when you're mixing up a big uh, amount of resin like this, it will develop quite a lot of heat. Um, not enough to damage the Legos or the, the, the molds, but um, you will be able to feel it with your hand holding it over here, so uh, don't be worried about that. I think if you make very big items, you should consider how to get rid of that heat. But you can already see it uh, actually getting hardened on the top, and uh, well, with this fast cast uh, resin, uh, you will be able to demold in about half an hour, I think. Uh, and I see no leakage, so it seems that I have been uh, doing a good job with the with the duct tape and uh, the other tapes as well. Okay, we'll get back in a little while. The mold has now had uh, about half an hour to, to harden and um, it's completely hard. Um, one thing I can see is that is there's a, a tiny little gap over here, so there is a little bit of shrinkage, which might uh, make the 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 final bait a little bit smaller, maybe half a percentage or something. But well, I don't think it matters, not to me anyway. Um, so I'll just uh, peel off these coming like that and as you can see a little bit of the little bit of the resin has ended up be below the the mold here but uh, most of it I can just peel off maybe uh, clean it up a bit with a knife I can actually see that I feel that I can take out the, the mold like that. Ok, 
Okay, I think we have uh, cleaned up the the edges here enough now to get the mold out. So I'll just uh, see if I can help it a bit with the screwdriver here. No problem. Like that. First chamber. As you can see, it uh, looks quite well. The pins here, well, they are quite firmly fixed there, so I can't uh, get those out. But uh, I don't need to because I need them in the mold for every cast. Uh, now I'll just uh, clean off these edges because uh, there's a bit of uh, resin going in over the, the part where the silicone is going to be poured. So uh, I'll just uh, clean that off and uh, well then I will actually go ahead and make, make myself an extra mold. But before I do that I'll just grab a piece of sandpaper and uh, give the bottom here a, a light rub. This will make it uh, more or less like paper and enable me to write how much silicone is needed to make this mold. And I know that since I've just made the other one and I know how much I used so I can easily take my notes from that one, these ones, saying just about 150 grams of silicone and 7.5 grams of, of hardener. And I have to double that up, so it is 300 gram silicone and 15 grams. Okay, and now I don't need to think about that every time I cast. I can just flip it over, see how much I need, mix it up, pour it in. Next day I have a new mold. It's just great. Okay, I'll just clean this up. And then I think, uh, well, this is all for this time. I guess you can imagine how this will turn out. I will be able to pull these out just like I just did. Just new ones. And I will be able to do that a lot, a lot of times. Uh, much more than I need so I can easily make new molds. Well that's all for, for this time. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it uh, useful and I hope to see you another time. Nothing left to say but I hope you see me soon.